It's in direct contrast to Paramount's oh, Gold no. Halo series, which fails to capture the urgency and spectacle of its source material. I mean, I mean, he's right. <laughs> I mean, he's right. See what IGN had to say about Fallout TV show. I'm very interested in what they had to say. Give it a 9 out of 10. That's some glowing reviews right there. Now, I acknowledge that I'm unfamiliar with your circumstances, but at first glance, your treatment of this man appears unfair and I'm obliged to intervene. War. Like, that sounds so, like, RPG dialogue that you would just kind of select on, you know? <laughs> like, I'm going with a Paragon run through of this TV show. War never changes. It's the ominous line that opens every game in the 26-year-old Fallout RPG series. War. War never changes. But while that may ring true for the tone of the eternal nuclear wasteland setting, thankfully the tide has largely turned for TV adaptations of video games. Following in the footsteps of HBO's The Last of Us and Netflix's Arcane, Prime Video now has itself an all-time great in Fallout. A confident- Dude, Arcane was actually a, a great show. If you haven't watched Arcane on Netflix, please do. Uh, I think season two is releasing this fall, if I remember correctly, but you don't even have to be in, into League of Legends to enjoy Arcane. It's that good. ...and accomplished post-apocalypse show that proudly wears its heritage on its sleeve, quite literally when it comes to its iconic blue and yellow vault tech costume design, while simultaneously being a compelling sci-fi drama all of its own. I mean, yeah, the show looks authentic. Produced by Westworld's Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, Fallout is set canonically within the world and continuity of the games, but its eight-episode story is not directly connected to anything you may have played. That means no prior experience is necessary in order to jump in with this entirely new cast of characters, starting with Ella Purnell's Lucy. Raised in Vault 33, one of many Fallout shelters built by the Vault Tech Company over 200 years ago, she's never known life outside its impressively realized steel and concrete walls. As such, she's an embodiment of the can-do spirit of pre-war America, which has been preserved for generations in this underground tin can come from that perspective because that's that's how you jump into every single world almost as a fallout game you can't cut you when you go out to the world you're like oh wow this is what real life is like kind of thing in a knowing echo of fallout 3's opening lucy is forced to explore the surface when her father played by carl mcclacklin goes missing sound familiar <laughs> you willingly stand down now <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect that like that's actually funny <laughs> where's the fallout doggo oh my gosh right there's no there's no where's dog meat and their efforts to make an original story that's distinctly fallout it's in direct contrast to paramount's oh, no. halo series which fails to capture the urgency and spectacle of its source material despite all the ripped from the game's armor designs and fps action sequences fallout scripts nail the humor capture the I mean, I mean, he's right. <laughs> I mean, he's right. Like this, like from all like the clips that we're seeing, like it's definitely an emphasis on the humor, but that's kind of like a little highlight kind of stuff. But from what I'm seeing right here, like this looks like what Fallout is. Now I'm not like a huge Fallout fan. I've played a little bit of three. Um, I never actually finished four, but I played a good majority of that as well. You know, I've always kept an eye on the franchise and you know, I get it when it comes to like what the franchise is about. This looks to be really good satire and understand the topics of the series, all without leaning on any pre-existing story. It's another special effort from Jonathan yeah, Nolan this... and Lisa Joy, and easily earns a big thumbs up. They just captured Fallout, dude. Like, that's literally what they did. They just were like, you, you know Fallout? Capture that vibe of the game, tell a new story, and go off with it. And that's exactly what they're doing with it, and it's amazing, honestly. It looks amazing. Like, it's exactly what I want when it comes to a Fallout show, and I'm definitely, definitely will be checking it out. I'm glad to see that, you know, video game adaptations are getting better the adaptation for halo just feels like your typical video game adaptation where like they take the idea of what the game is and then they just do their own thing with the ip that has nothing to do with the actual source material this one looks like it actually does do a faithful recreation of what fallout is i'm surprised how highly rated it's it's been like rotten tomatoes giving it 90 plus percent from the official reviewers ign giving it a nine like let's compare that with like the halo show right Dude, they gave it a six for season two and that's kind of accurate we're like season two is like it's good it's better than the first season but i just completely lost interest with season two for the halo show like i just kind of just stopped watching because it's like especially in the middle of the season it was just a real drag. There wasn't really anything interesting happening. Way too much emphasis on Soren and that whole story arc with his kid and his wife. I was like, I don't care. Like I mentioned like last stream that like Zany posted a, posted a video doing like a watch party kind of funny review of the season two. 
in basically any scene that involves Sora and they just kept saying vote to skip. I definitely get that because it was just like, I don't care about the story arc whatsoever. Just really odd choices. And then, the, then there'd be something good in there and you're like, that's great. And then it gets torn down and like in the very next scene, you're like, okay, now I'm not happy about this. And like the action scenes were great. A lot of the character development when it comes to the external characters was really well done, much better done than season one. At points it felt a lot like Halo and other points it felt nothing like Halo. Like I said, it just felt like an old school game adaptation. Cause like they just try to transpose like your typical story arcs that you would have within TV shows and transpose that over the game and it doesn't necessarily work out one to one like that. The funny thing is that like, I think it's just, we see such better adaptations of video games to shows, mainly because the people in making the decisions of how you develop these shows are likely people who have played the games or are gamers as well. So we're starting to get to the point now where these video game adaptations are being ran by people who actually probably played video games. Or previously it was just like executives thinking they can make a quick buck off of like people just cause you throw Pokemon on the movie screen doesn't necessarily mean the Pokemon movie is going to be good, you know what I mean?